Mary Goldwater on November the 11th. Uh, do we really need to? Can I say one more thing about you, Bert? No. We're stalling. No. Right. Mary Goldwater. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the beginning of modern conservatism, but also an unlikely politician. Uh, some of these people seem to have absorbed it in their water or soup or whatever. Uh, I, I mean, here, here's Barry Goldwater, and he's the, he should have been in the head of the department store in Phoenix. And yet, gradually, he takes this path that I think is true of, of some other politicians, that they get into community affairs, and then, uh, as you know, he's elected to the Senate. And he certainly is a man of principle. He has given us one of our um, perhaps worse uh, quotations that we all lobbying know. The, lobbying the A-BAM. Oh. And he was the victim of a really dirty uh, journalistic advertising trick uh, by the Johnson uh, campaign. I, I do think that that's an unfair kind of a political ad, and I would be interested Richard in your Richard response. Richard Nunn says in 64, in, in how 64, bad did he get The be? problem is, in some ways, he set himself up but how bad did he for get that. Be? He, uh, uh, LBJ set, uh, broke FDR's 1936 record, uh, 486 electoral votes to 52. Uh, and, but it's interesting, Goldwater barely carried his home state of Arizona, and he took four or five mm -hmm. deep mm -hmm. southern states, states Georgia, that had never voted for a Republican. Uh, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, I believe he took South Carolina so and Louisiana. Do you, uh, do you attribute to him the new Southern strategy that? Yeah. Know? Well, the fact is, Goldwater voted against yeah. the Civil Rights Act. Yeah. He voted against cutting off debate, and he voted against the act. Again, you could say a man of principle. Goldwater, in fact, himself had been instrumental in desegregating his family's department yeah. stores, in desegregating the National Guard in Arizona, but he was such a believer in states' rights and, and so, so uh, constitutionally opposed to what he saw as federal coercion. Um, I think the other thing, of course, with Goldwater is later on he became every liberal's favorite conservative because he called Jerry Falwell names. Uh, he was outspokenly... Uh, pro gay rights. He famously said, You don't have to be straight to serve in the armed forces. You only have to shoot straight. And it was that, well, that, was, but it was that it, libertarian. That was after he left the Senate. At, even while he was in the Senate, Richard, when President Reagan nominated Sandra Day O'Connor to be in the court, and he'd said he'd nominate a woman, and so he took that literally his own promise and he nominated her. And Jesse Helms spoke against her. And she wasn't sufficiently uh, solid on the right to life movement for Helms. And Goldwater was in Arizona. A friend of mine went out there. He was an Arizona television reporter. And he runs out there, where are you going? And he said, like, Goldwater had his hair on fire. He said, I'm going back to Washington. And I'm going to tell, explain to Jesse Helms that I'm the most conservative man in the Senate. Well, in some ways, he wasn't anymore. Exactly. And, and, and Falwell had made a statement that any loyal American should oppose uh, Falwell's or uh, O'Connor's appointment, an unfortunate choice of words, and Barry said any loyal American should kick Jerry Falwell in the ass, and so, so he he's a transition figure, and yeah, we can see a, through him in his career the change, the evolution of the Republican Party. That's true. He was also a cranky guy. He as he got older, he got crankier. <laughs> I, and Bob Dole used to tell me when Dole was majority leader, if, you know, Goldwater was was pissed off at something you said or did. He, he'd take his cane and and physically uh, let you know of his displeasure. I mean, he was he was a. We say we want authentic people <laughs> representing us. He was authentic. We these.